Hi, welcome back to the J.C. League House in Galveston. I'm Janie, and this is my friend and fellow board member, Letitia. And we are here getting ready, doing last minute preparations for the steampunk event that's going to be here today. We've been working very hard for the last couple of weeks and with our volunteer day to get the grounds ready because as one of the events of the festival, people could buy a ticket to come to the grounds today and rent a cool um, golf, golf, cart. golf cart that looks like an old Model T car. They're really cute from Carriage House Rentals here on Broadway. And they're going to come in and go through the circular drive and park here, check games. out the grounds, some games, and then come inside and tour the house. So it has been a long, um, like, <laughs> I think my little hat. We're not quite fully geared up in our steampunk stuff. We've been to the thrift store buying and trying our best. Um, I think we did. Okay, we got a few more things to add on before everybody gets here, but it is a little warm although it's breezy nice and breeze. um, cool in the breeze and up on the porch is it's lovely really nice. so it should be a great day we've been biting nails about the weather but it turned out to be a fabulous event they were expecting 700 people at the main event at the railroad museum they ended up with over 1500 people they were all over downtown galveston and businesses spending money it's a great thing for the city so we're real excited and they're going to do the same event next year because it turned out so well and we'll actually get paid to be a part of the event. We did it just for promotion this time and to help the organizer out as he's getting started. So let me show you some of the things that went on this last couple of days, um, well actually the last day, to get ready here at the house. Here's our crew today, Ricardo and Maribel and me, and we're just going to go around the house and clean up. I just ran out of oomph yesterday and didn't get finished, so Ricardo's already loading up metal. He's very strong. <laughs> we're going to go to the recycler. And I'm going to get my gloves on and get busy too. We're very lucky that there's a metal recycler just about four miles from the house and we collect everything. This house generates so much trash and I hate to see it go into the landfill. So where we can, we sort everything and try to get it to the recycling center. And we get a better price for it if we sort it out by the type of metal. So I'm constantly out in the front yard picking up beer cans that people throw over the fence and we just throw them in our little hidey hole and keep them and take them to the recycler when we have other metal to turn in. For everyone out there who's fantasized about restoring an old house, it is fun, I have to admit, but for every hour of really cool fun stuff there is to do, there's 10 to 20 hours of just gross, dirty, menial stuff to do like we're doing here. And it may not seem important to sort out all these cans and bits of metal and everything that we have. You may think, why don't you just throw it away and move on with it? But in addition to keeping it out of the landfill, we don't have to pay the cost to dump it in the landfill. And disposal cost is high and it goes by weight and metal is heavy. In addition, we do get a little revenue back. And over the course of the last two years, we've taken out so much metal between the water pipes, the drain pipes, some of the guttering, old flashing, the railroad track that formed the top of the cistern. We've received a little over $3,000, I think, back in revenue. And that's a lot when it comes to avoiding a dump fee and then receiving revenue back. So it is definitely worth our time and effort to go through this process. Our big challenge going forward will be to keep this area clean. Everybody has that place in their house where you just tend to throw junk when you don't quite know what to do with it. And this little nook under the stairs is that place for us at this house. There's all kinds of strange things under here. 
And we actually found a little surprise when we were finally getting to the point of cleaning it out. So we're going to work really hard not to let this area get so trashy again. With that area clean and Ricardo through loading up all the really heavy metal, we turned our attention to the back of the addition. And this area has been a mess since the very first day. It's always had some kind of trash or lumber or something piled up here. And I'm just tired of looking at it and it needs to go. So we decided that a better storage place for it would be up under the front porch, kind of around that staircase area on the side where nobody ever goes. At least it would be dry and out of sight. So it's a long way to carry it around the house, but we got started moving it piece by piece. And once we got that all taken care of, we found another little item that we needed to resolve. Maribel came and got me to tell me that Ricardo's about to attach the truck to the ground rod and try to pull it out. So she and I are hiding in the garage and I'm setting the camera up and we're going to go take cover. Okay, here he comes. I envision that rod flying up and going right through his back window. The last time my husband said he could do this, he ended up losing a mirror off his truck. He was so busy watching what he was pulling, he hit a gate. We'll see if this goes any better. A little look of confidence. Is your truck insured? Maddie Bell. <laughs> and it broke his strap. <laughs> that was a fail. Ricardo pretty easily gave up on the truck method of trying to put the strap back on and pull this thing out of the ground. So we went back to the tried and true method of just digging and the ground is soft. So we dug and dug and dug down pretty deep and we jiggled and jiggled on this thing and tried to loosen it up. It didn't come out. So we dug some more. We tried getting the sledgehammer and whacking it around a little bit to see if we could break it free from whatever was holding it the bottom or just maybe loosen the sand around it that didn't work so we went back to jiggling and pulling on it ricardo he's stronger so he tried he couldn't get it to budge we got the pry bar out and tried to go down below it and see if we could get it out we're using all of our techniques this should be kind of deja vu all over again of the gate fiasco trying to get that open so we've been using levers he tried putting the strap on it to change the lever from a class 2 lever into a class 1 lever and pull on it that didn't do anything this thing was really stuck in the ground and so in the end we just gave up like we did on the gate we dug down some more and got as much of it exposed as we could and then ricardo got the grinder and just went ahead and cut it off below ground and not only was there one over here there were two grounds i'm not sure why they needed two and it's not anywhere near the electric service so i'm not even sure what they're for but we repeated this process again and got the second one out through the metal in the truck with the rest of the recycling and moved on to the next project. And speaking of deja vu all over again, that next project for me was to take that grinder and head out to the fence. But on the way there, I spotted a few ibis running around in the yard having some brunch. 
After all the fussing with the gate a few days before, you think it would be simple to just get the grinder and cut that plate off. Unfortunately, because I had bent it over towards the inside of the yard, the width of the grinding blade wasn't quite enough to get all the way back and cut the piece of metal off. I tried and tried and tried, and I don't know why I thought I could defy the laws of geometry or basic math, but I could not. So I had to give up and go get the sledgehammer and bend the plate back to its original position so I could use the grinder. I couldn't go around the outside and grind because the fence was in the way. I was a little hesitant about really swinging hard with the sledgehammer and giving that plate one good whack to bend it back. I was afraid I would miss and hit the gate and shatter the gate and do more damage to it. So I just gently tap, tap, tap and bend it up enough that I could get the grinder in there and finish getting that plate off of there. With the plate removed, I went to look for a new task to do. Something's going on. I've got all the tools. Ricardo had gotten into the metal recycling thing and he apparently was going around the house looking for anything and everything metal that he could cut and put in that truck. And there had been this pipe that came out from this little nook in the house that lead? It seems to be a water pipe, but it's not city water going into the house. I think what it was, was a water pipe that went from the cistern outside into the gardens to water the gardens from the cistern. You could see it laying on the surface, but as it moved away from the house, it went deeper and deeper underground. So the first order of business was just to free it from where it went into the house. That That is the, um, no, that's that big uh, drain pipe that went down to feed the cistern. So that's not going anywhere. Is that lead coming out? Then that proved to be a little harder than we thought it would be, just like everything else in this house. If you guys thought I was a little bit obsessive about trying to get that gate open, you ain't seen nothing yet. I spent about 10 minutes on that gate. Ricardo spent about 35 minutes just trying to get this crazy water pipe detached from the house so he could pry it up. And we couldn't figure out why it was so hard. It was buried partially in concrete. It had been wrapped in a little bit of lead, but it just did not want to break free. So out came the grinder and he ended up having to grind through it in three different places. I love the grinder. It smells so good. It smells like fireworks. The question is going to be where does it go and how long does it go? jumping method. <laughs> I decided to get back to my own business so I headed back over to the gate. The gate wouldn't open. We clearly had not dug out enough dirt on this side so I got the shovel and went back to digging. I think I ended up digging out two or three wheelbarrows worth of dirt but finally got the gate open and decided to do a little more cleanup in that corner since that's where the cars would be coming in and out of the property. I wanted it to look nice. 
It was about 10.30, and I had remembered to wear my Fitbit today. A lot of times I don't wear it because the strap gets in the way. But at 10.30, I was already up to 7,700 steps. It was going to be a long day. Ricardo decided to tackle that palm stump that I had worked on the week before, and he's a lot stronger than I am and can swing his arm. So he got the pickaxe and went after it and seemed to be making good progress. So I left and went and met with a very special guest. This is Sally LaRocca, who is a direct descendant from the Waters Davis line. And if you remember your house genealogy, Waters Davis Jr. married Daisy league so she's got a very direct connection to the house and she brought some of her friends down to take a tour and when we finished i went back and ricardo had used his truck to tie that strap onto the stump and pull it out he just could not let it go so the whole stump was out and there was a gaping hole in the yard to fill in but while i did that i did find my lucky penny for the day ricardo left to take some more plywood off the porch and then he tackled cutting down my standpipe for the sewer line that has just, he's been my true love of this house for a year now, but he was kind of ugly and needed to be shortened so he wouldn't be so obtrusive. And I thought it was funny because Ricardo had a little trouble with his sawzall. He ejected the blade, I think, four or five times before he got it latched in there right and was able to cut this thing down. finally got it done and then we moved a little furniture we took 10 wheelbarrows full of dirt out of the gutter and cleaned up from where the city had been doing road work and where they worked on our sidewalk that had been a mess and I looked down at my Fitbit and it was only about 3:30, and I had already walked almost 21,000 steps so my feet were killing me but by the end of the day, almost everything was crossed off my list. I sent Ricardo home early, and I took a moment to just walk around the property and enjoy just how clean and nice everything looked. Most of our trash is gone. The garage is cleared out. drain pipe is cut down still needs cap the birds are going crazy this whole area is cleaned out Wood is moved, everything's raked. All the trash picked up, the door got painted. The side even got picked up. The only thing we didn't get to that I had on my list was to cut down all these little trash trees that have grown up. This little section of fence needs cleaning up. But otherwise, this area looks really good. All the plywood's down off the windows up there. Sherry cleaned all this area. We cut back the bamboo so people can actually walk on the sidewalk. Maribel even swept under the porch. Sherry brought some plants and put in our planters and a few little flowers. Joe pulled all those weeds out of the steps. This old girl looks pretty good. My feet were so tired. I was glad to have one day of rest before our part of the festival 
and there were a few last minute chores to do on the day of the picnic itself. And when you're the boss, you get to save all the very best chores for yourself. Once we were done with that, Letitia and I got dressed and it was time to receive our guest. They started rolling in in these incredibly bright, fun cars and everyone was dressed up. They were all fired up from the festival the night before. We had some food and drinks and games out on the lawn. People had their picnics and just time to visit and talk about all of the events of the festival the night before. It was a beautiful day. Here's Joe on the lawn with a few of our picnickers playing a Victorian hoop game called Graces. It's fun, but it can be a little trickier than it looks like to play. Traditionally, Graces was only played by girls and women, and it actually got its name Graces because they thought it would help young girls become more graceful in their movement, and that was held in high esteem. So boys didn't play. Sometimes very young boys might play with a sister, but you would never find two boys playing this game together. And straight out of Alice in Wonderland, we also had a little flamingo hedgehog croquet going on. And the costumes were just incredible. They made Letitia and I look very amateurish. Time seemed to go by very quickly, and I didn't get many pictures because I was inside giving tours of the house. But we did have time together, everyone together on the steps on the side of the house under the portico chair, and get a nice group picture. Before you know it, it was time for everyone to hop in their cars and head off for a driving tour of some of the other incredible old homes here on Galveston Island. We're back. We're tired, but it was a good day. I Lots think a lot of fun. Everybody had a good time. The weather held. It was, well, I probably have hat hair and humidity oh, yeah, sure. hair. I haven't been inside to look in the mirror. I'm afraid to watch the video. But anyway, it was 98% humidity this morning. I think that has dropped because the skies are much bluer now and there's still this beautiful, cool breeze. It was great. People had fun. They picnicked. My all-time favorite was a family that gathered around one of the palm stumps yes. and used it the as table. a table. I thought that was really <laughs> cute. But people were excited about the house. They had a lot of questions and hopefully we'll gain some new followers but for now we're gonna go home and kick back and relax so signing off from the jc oh i said it wrong signing off from the lee kempner house in galveston texas thanks for watching and we will see you next time bye